Hello, I am Bev Rambeau from the Ecology Lab at the University of Waterloo. And today I want to show you how to collect plants using a roll, dry the plant and mount it. First, a few notes on the collection of plants. Do not collect from private property or natural areas unless you have permission. Today we are in the Arts Environment Garden on the University of Waterloo campus. Gardens which are maintained by the Ecology Lab. In addition, don't collect anything that is not abundant in the area where you are picking it to avoid removing rare species, unless you happen to know that it is an introduced or an invasive species. A plastic roll is ideal for plant collection. This one is actually a table liner bought from Lens Mill. A plastic bag can also be used, but it is more difficult to keep the plant in good shape in a plastic bag. So ideally, you want to identify the plant in the field prior to collection. We are using Newcomb's Wildflower Guide. You can see this first plant specimen has four flower parts, alternate leaf arrangements, and divided leaves. It is always a good idea to take clear, good quality pictures of the plant and plant parts showing the characteristics needed for identification. Unroll one end of the plastic roll and collect the plant parts that show the features that you need for identification, flower type, leaf arrangement, leaf type, etc. Sometimes it is helpful to also collect roots. Always label the plant as soon as you collect and make sure that the label stays with the plant. This can be a simple code and a reference to your field notebook or full details of who, where, when, and what. If necessary, fold the collected plants to the appropriate length and place them onto the scroll of clear plastic, including the label with each specimen. Roll the scroll over the specimen and then the next part is where we will place our next plant. Make sure the scroll is secured to prevent unrolling. If necessary, you can use elastic or string to hold it securely. So now we'll move on to collect our second plant specimen. Again, we will identify it using Newcomb's Wildflower Guide and then take some photos. For this plant, since it has basil leaves only, we will need to dig a bit in order to get all of the leaves and parts needed for identification. Unrolling the free end of the roll while keeping the other end secure, we will add this plant, create a label, and then roll this one beside the first plant. Once again, this plant is an abundant species on the lawn and by collecting it, we are not threatening it. Here we have our third plant we will be collecting. First, we will ID it with Newcomb's Wildflower Guide and take some pictures. We will now create a label and a reference in the field notebook, noting the species, where it is found, and any other things to note. Then we can take a few samples of the plant, getting as far down to the base as we can. A scroll of 1 to 1.5 meters will hold about 20 specimens, and when ready to press, we just unroll the scroll. It's important to press the plants as soon as possible after collection. If you can't press them right away, keep them in the fridge until you can. Dab them dry if there's a lot of moisture on the plant, for example, if you collected it in the rain. We make plant presses to preserve our plant specimen. Plant pressing is best used to dry a plant into a form that can then be mounted on paper. We will demonstrate how to best press a plant and what materials are needed to successfully do so. You can use a big book, but a plant press is ideal. A plant press is made up of two rigid pieces that make up the frame, often made of strips of wood, and if possible, an inner solid piece to provide a rigid base for the press. You will also need straps, which you can tighten. You want to slowly draw moisture out of the plant using blotting paper or newsprint, allow for air circulation between plants using cardboard, and flatten the plant using a press or book as a weight. The key is to balance the weight and materials to allow some air space so the plants dry evenly and slowly, but not so heavy that the plant will darken in color and mold. Place the specimen between layers of newspaper with leaves flat and flowers spread, and important ID features apparent. Include a label with necessary information. You can even make the final label at this point if documenting for a herbarium. Place blotting paper and cardboard between specimens. 
Blotting paper is used to absorb some of the moisture. Extra newspaper can be used if blotting paper is not available. While you prepare your next specimen, it is helpful to place the press frame on top of the pressed specimens to keep the plants flat. Now we'll prepare our next specimen. Sometimes it's helpful to remove one flower and press it separately. Make sure the leaves are spread out nicely. We will also create a label, then we'll put this plant into our press and again place a piece of blotting paper and then cardboard. Now we'll unroll our roll to the first plant we collected, spread it out nicely, create a label and add it to the press. When all the plants are in the press, we tighten the straps of the press. Plants need to stay in the press for three to four weeks for drying before mounting. To mount the dried pressed plants, we will need a painting board on which we will paint a one to one ratio of white glue to water, wax paper to prevent sticking, cardboard, blotting paper, the mounting paper, our pressed plants, and the weight box where we will put our mounted plants. First, place the dried plant on paper to determine how to best position the plant. Be sure to leave at least one centimeter of border and consider where the label will go in the bottom right corner. Paint the paint board with a diluted glue and place the dried plant on the board. With tweezers, press lightly along the stem and leaves so that all parts have contact with the glue. Use tweezers to lift the plant and place it on the mounting paper in the predetermined location. Move it around a bit if necessary to make sure there are no wrinkles and that the features can be viewed easily. Finally, glue on the herbarium label. Place the mounted plant in the weight box, cover it with wax paper, blotting paper, and cardboard. Place the weight block on top of the plant press before adding another mounted specimen. If at home, you can use heavy books in place of the weight block. We will now mount our next pressed plant, first laying it out to determine its position on the mounting paper and then moving it onto the glue board and making sure to press different parts of the plant down so they are in contact with the glue. Place the plant on the mounting paper, remove the weight block, place the mounted plant in the box and again cover with wax paper, blotting paper and cardboard. Place the weight block on top. Here are a few tips for mounting your plant. Turn one leaf upside down so both sides of the leaves can be seen easily. Make sure the leaf arrangement and leaf type are evident. For flower features, you can remove a flower and glue it in a separate location. Seeds can also be collected and put in a small envelope that is glued onto the paper. To complete the specimen label, include the common name of the plant, the Latin family name, the scientific name, which includes the Latin genus and species. Include also the geographic location. Be precise. For example, include a nearby building or the road name or park name, GPS coordinates if possible. Also include the city, province, country. It can also be helpful to include a site description. For example, the habitat of the plant was found in a riparian zone or an upland forest or a roadside ditch. Include also the collector and the collection date and then any other important comments. Glue the label in the lower right hand corner of the plant press. When finished, place the block on top of the mounted specimens. They need to stay in the weight box for 24 hours. Remove them the next day and you have your mounted plant specimens.